Hey everybody, Flash Bay here. And as part of our Evolution of Seed series here on the Afterburn Podcast, today we are going to talk SAM, Service Air Missile Systems. We're going to talk about the early development of these systems, how they came to be, the very first SAM system that was ever introduced, and some fun facts about some of those things. <clears throat> and then we're going to talk about talk about kind of the OG of the world supplier of surface air missile systems, Russia or, or the Soviet Union, if we will. Throughout the series, we're going to talk about different countries and their indigenously produced uh, SAM systems. Uh, but today we're going to start with Russia. So how did SAMs become, come to be? As with all things, with a new capability, a counter to that capability or a threat to that capability was developed. So when the aeroplane became a, a thing back in 1903 and then utilized in World War I uh, with some uh, early on fighters and some balloons and things like that, people on the ground were like, how can we shoot those things down? So the very first kind of concept of a surface air missile system was actually based on a guided rocket, if you will. So, I mean, if you could just shoot them down with a, a small arm weapon or a gun from the ground, all good. Uh, but as far as a guided system uh, to hit a moving target, what they developed was these rockets. So what it was was a light beam from the ground would track an aircraft and then these uh, rockets uh, with selenium cells on the fins would actually guide toward the system. So you had these selenium cells on the fins on the back. And whenever one of those cells would go outside of the light beam, it would detect that and then it would steer opposite to make sure that all four of those cells were getting back into the light beam. Kind of a little bit like the bang bang guidance of a GB-12. Didn't work. Uh, so as far as these things were developing, the very first drawing of a surface air missile system, inter interestingly enough, uh, was by a German named Gustav Rasmus in 1931. Where did he live and what did he do? San Diego. Uh, he was a patent lawyer in San Diego and was an inventor, uh, invented numerous things, but one of those things was a concept for a surface air missile system that guided via some sort of beam. Uh, or the initial one that he came up with was guiding acoustically on aircraft engines. Also, didn't work. So now when we kind of get into World War II with bombing raids and things of that nature and all the heavy German 88s uh, or AAA guns uh, that you kind of saw, uh, the 8th eighth, eighth Bomb Group and things of that nature that were absolutely getting shredded by these guns. What guys wanted to do or what uh, custom countries wanted to do was they wanted to develop systems that could reach out and touch these bombers and their uh, respective escort fighters at longer range. Because if they were over the target with these guns, then they could just drop their bombs and then they would either hit the guns themselves or they would actually get to their target uh, and then maybe get shot down on egress, if you will. So trying to get these things out uh, to a longer range to actually preclude these bombing raids. So a lot of different systems, Werner von, Werner von Braun, uh, kind of the developer of the V-1, V-2 rocket, was brought in to potentially build some SAM systems. Nothing was ever developed in World War II that was uh, generally successful uh, or operationally relevant uh, in that time. So who was the actual first uh, country to develop a SAM system that worked? The United States with the Nike Ajax program. So that was... Uh, brought into initial operating capability in 1954, March 10th of 1954. Uh, it didn't really work that well either, uh, but uh, it kind of the precursor to all surface air missile systems and then developed the Nike Hercules system in 1958. That was actually a nuclear armed uh, surface air missile, which uh, is awesome. I like that. But uh, the, big per the big nation, the big agent that was uh, scared of aircraft and bombing raids uh, was the Soviet Union. They watched how the United States conducted their war. And then they also watched the United States drop two by nuclear weapons on Japan. And he said, not here. So what he uh, <clears throat> directed his, uh, the military technological developers uh, to come up with was the surface air missile systems that could protect Moscow and also just protect Russian airspace. So this anti-access area denial, A2AD, if you will, is not a new concept, uh, but an old concept over time that has been developed uh, since the 1950s. So when we when we come up with some of these systems, what they came up with was the S25 system, the SA1, if you will. So when we look at uh, when we look at these systems, we're going to use a little bit of the NATO designated term, and we're also going to use the term that the country uses. That is important to know what these countries actually call their systems, so that we can go ahead and understand what these systems do and the development over time. So the S25 system, SA1, not very good, reaching out to about 10 to 12, uh, 15 nautical miles, about 20 to 25 kilometers. Overall, very heavy, very fixed, not mobile, didn't work. Then 
the OG was built. The S75 system, also known as the SA2, which is the wide, most proliferated uh, SAM missile system in the world, still in use today by certain countries, but it is where we developed uh, the need for the Wild Weasel program to combat this SA2 system. Going back to our original discussion, in the event that you have a technological capability that's being developed, how do you counter this system? So the first uh, SAM shootdown that's ever been recorded in history is in 1960 over Moscow with a U-2 spy plane, and then again in 1962 with Francis Gary Powers over Cuba. Uh, apologies. Francis Gary Powers was over Moscow in 1960, and then Major Rudolf Anderson over Cuba in 1962. That was with the S-75 system. So how did Russia develop these systems over time, and what are they trying to do? So what Russia tries to do uh, to, through today is a good integrated air, um, air defense system is going to talk about defending their airspace, their sovereign airspace, from space to the surface. So they have systems at all levels to be able to do that. So kind of looking through the history of these things, you got the S-25, then the S-75 is kind of going from there, and then you have the S-125. So now more of a, a little bit more uh, technologically advanced SAM, jam-resistant, lower altitude to medium altitude versus the S-75 that was kind of going out a little bit longer range, higher altitude. And that system, the SA-3 is the S-125, uh, has been iterated over time and has been developed as well, uh, still in use uh, overall today. So when you kind of look at what they did in Vietnam, so you had the S-75 system, which was the primary system, pretty much the only one of the day. That was the one where the Wild Weasel program was born. According to the Vietnamese, of the 3,374 aircraft that the United States lost in the Vietnam War, um, we always remember those aircraft that have been lost on their crews, uh, killed in action, MIA, POWs, things of that nature. So always to the wild weasels. But of those 3,374, according to the Vietnamese, 31% of those, or 1,046 aircraft, were shot down by the S-75. That number is disputed specifically by the United States. Uh, but what we look at is about a 6.1% of aircraft lost uh, in Vietnam to SAMs, which is about 205 aircraft. But regardless, incredibly capable system for the time, and something that was now developing into its own mission set to go out and conduct suppression of enemy air defenses uh, for those overall systems. And technology only gets better over time, unfortunately for air crew, and then fortunately uh, for people that then go out and execute this mission, that you have to know the enemy to be able to keep up with these threats and now understand what the Russians are trying to do. So with that space to surface kind of system, let's start from the bottom. So when you're looking at it is they've also developed man pads, man portable air defense systems, shoulder mounted rocket systems, SA-7s, SA-14s, things of that nature that can just hut hut around with some army units. Uh, then kind of some guided or some, the guided missile systems tracked or uh, wheeled on some of the systems. The earliest ones being something that you guys think about the SA-8 or the OSA system. You got the SA-15, the TOR system, the TOR family of systems. That's all from overall just developing over time when i think of tor like how far thor how far can i throw a hammer these are cheesy i understand but how far can i throw a hammer short short range so short range missile system and then the sa-22 the pant serve system kind of walking around uh hud hudding around with some of the longer range missile systems i will talk about here in a minute that is now going to be kind of focused on just protecting those systems overall so it's like the low altitude shorter range letting the weapons or the aircraft or whatever needs to be getting kind of close in chopped to some army units all right now let's start looking into the medium range systems medium altitude medium range so the one of the very first ones you got the cub missile system kub uh the 2k12 you're talking about your sa6 is all open source by the way uh as far as the things of this nature and how we develop or how we watch this development happen over time but the sa6 system so again just single uh, radar with some launchers around, uh, track system, track and wheel, different components of all that. And that's now going to be just a inside of uh, roughly about 12 to 10 nautical mile kind of shot, if you will. So looking at like those medium range altitude, uh, medium range systems, which conversely turned into a development of the Buk missile system. So you got the Cub, KUB, you got the Buk, B-U-K, not necessarily sure if that's, uh, if that's on purpose, but that's what it is. So you got your Buk missile system. This is where you're going to start getting into your uh, medium range advancements of medium range missile systems. We'll talk about PISA versus ESA here in a minute. But now when you got your Buk M1 or your Buk M, your Buk M1, your Buk M1-2, 
and then your Book M3 missile system, where we're stepping it up into the SA-11, SA-17, and then SA-27 that's kind of in, in uh, service today. When you look at the things that are kind of going on in the Russia-Ukrainian war, Ukrainians uh, utilizing first-person video drones uh, and some artillery and things of this nature, really targeting some of these medium-range missile systems because they're incredibly lethal and cr- widely proliferated. They have a lot of a lot of missiles and are incredibly lethal as well to both aircraft and weapons uh, alike. So they're trying to get after those medium-range SAMs uh, that you can kind of look at as something that Ukraine has definitely uh, attempted to do, uh, as you can check it out on X in the captions. So when you look at that, so now is like the Buk missile system. Now let's get into your uh, S system. So when we looked at the S-75, the S-125, then now what came with the S-200, which was the SA-5 system. So kind of your very first long range SAM system, if, uh, if you will. So very important uh, to be able to take those things out, kind of looking at our tanker, our, our tanker fleet, uh, high value assets, kind of like our C-2, uh, airplanes are big wing ISR kind of things that they that we're looking to target is they watch how we fight getting people and aircraft into the mission space if you will and getting them into the AOR trying to preclude that so the S200 was the first uh, kind of iteration to be able to stop us from doing that that gave way to the S300 missile system so when you're looking at your S300 you got your S300 S300P S300PV P slash S P S P S T P T then you've got your PMU 1-2, your SA-20 system. Uh, so SA-10 was the initial S-300. Then you've got your SA-20 system. But then in the middle there, you've got your S- S-300V and S-300VM, your SA-12 and your SA-23. So what are we looking at here? So with those S-300 systems, we're looking at long range. Long range, high altitude. So as these kind of systems are being developed, we're looking at reaching out and touching and, and truly building an anti-access area denial type in environment so that nobody can get in to include aircraft, weapons, ICBMs as we start moving into the S-400 system. Uh, if you can uh, remember some previous pods, we've talked about the, um, the export of the S-400 missile system to Turkey and that being the uh, kind of precursor to them losing the F-35 program uh, specifically. But... This S-400 system, now you're talking about very, very technologically advanced for now this time, utilizing a lot of different components to truly build its own indigenous air picture and being able to reach out and touch aircraft as well as cruise missiles and pretty much anything flying uh, out to a very long range. Uh, So now we're looking into that umbrella is now reaching near space, if you will. So then you got your S-500 system. So that's in current development, future development, S-500, S-550. Now you're looking at things that are looking uh, to go out and reach things in mid-course, potentially in space, and truly finishing that full umbrella, if you will. Think Iron Dome, uh, but higher uh, uh, for the Russian for the Russian integrated air defense system. But you got your S-500, S-550 now kind of looking at those ICBMs and being able to touch those things before they actually become a factor to their overall country and now touching them in mid-course and kind of the um, mid-space or near-space kind of environment, if you will. So as far as those are the systems, so you got your rockets on, on light beams, you've got homing in on aircraft engines, and then you've got this very, very left to right, highly developed, highly technologically complex missile systems that are guiding on radar beams, and then other means uh, in which they're building their integrated air defense systems. Over those times, you're kind of looking at your PISA radars, your passively electronic scan arrays, and your advanced electronic uh, scan arrays, and how they're integrated into the actual system themselves, the radars themselves, and then how they feed into an overall integrated air defense system. So the integrated air defense system, it talks. So you got, uh, again, open source, you got air surveillance, battle management, weapons control, but from top to bottom, all they're trying to do is just get everybody on the same page so that they can go ahead and shoot down missile systems or shoot down aircraft, apologies, with missile systems that they choose. So being able to use the right weapon, the right shooter for the right target is what an IADS is attempting to do overall. Uh, and again, on our side with the weasel mission is we're trying to preclude them from being able to do that, get inside the kill chain, kill web, if you will. But when we're kind of looking at some of these uh, systems as they've been developed, you've got your passive electronic scanning array. 
again, a upgrade over the mech scan kind of radar that you look at or just fixed radar with uh, of like an S75 system, SA2. Now you have a bunch of different electronically scanned arrays. However, on a PSA, it's just one big transmitter. So you have one transmitter going out to a bunch of different arrays, being able to scan those things around and steer those beams, but kind of uh, a little bit prone to failure because it's one transmitter. And then additionally, because it's one transmitter, one frequency. So very prone to uh, jam resistance, or sorry, to jamming uh, and electronic warfare, as you can go ahead and look up online on the Googles. And then you got your advanced electronically scanned arrays uh, systems as far uh, as that is. Now you have individual transmitters for individual modules, if you will. So inside of that radar, you've got a bunch of different tra uh, modules in there uh, and nodes. So then you got your individual TR modules so that those can all be potentially, uh, in theory, is those can all be different frequencies, or you can update that frequency over time, frequency hop, more jam resistant, more uh, resistance to electronic warfare, uh, something that is trying to jam them and preclude them from doing their job overall. So that's pretty much uh, what it is from soup to nuts. Uh, from 1920, uh, the earliest development of SAM systems, all the way to today and into the future fight. So what does this mean to us overall? is that SAMs are never going to uh, cease to be developed. So the technology is always going to get better. These systems are gonna become more and more lethal. And now you have to be a little bit more knowledgeable about how these systems work to be able to get into and uh, have as far as like this anti-access is gain access, if you can, to be able to accomplish objectives. But overall, uh, that is kind of the way we are looking from SAMs from all the way from the beginning to today. And I hope you guys enjoyed the Evolution of Seed series. Check out our newsletter, like, subscribe, listen to us uh, wherever you get your podcasts. And thank you very much and happy weaseling.